I made a video about a precision oscillator to test radio coils. And this is the final stage from that circuit. And I want to tell that I have that I've changed some things. Here you see the switch with which the caps are switched. And this switch proved to be reliable. Another switch uh, was not useful. So this type of switch is the uh, switch that you have to use for this oscillator circuit. And by the way, this type of switch you always see in old radios from the 50s and the 60s, etc. So that's a good switch. We also made a very simple power supply. And you can see that here output 13.3 volts, classical um, um, rectifier circuit with four diodes, a great circuit. And the cap here is uh, 1000 microfarad. So that's all uh, that I had to um, do to make the circuit in real. Here you see the shielding, shielding from the, uh, the, the switch with which I changed the capacitors. Tin plate glued to a triplex wooden board. Here also one point earth is always necessary for these kinds of circuits, etc. And of course fuse is here for the power supply. This is the most important fuse. It delivers 17.4 volts and it still works uh, between the frequencies from 35 kilohertz and 10 megahertz. Here you see the, the front from the circuit. Here is a switch where I switch the capacitors that uh, form a capacitive voltage divider that makes the field effect transistor to oscillate. And here you see how I made the switch finally. Here you see the circuit. I hope it's visible from this distance. You see that I did not use uh, six uh, contacts, but only five. And I used only two capacitors going from the gate to the source. A 1N capacitor and a 4N7 capacitor. So 1000 picofarad and 4700 picofarad. And the other caps were not changed, so you can find the values from these caps in the first video. And now let's look at coils, radio coils. <coughs> I made a kind of table in which I showed on which frequency <coughs> an unknown coil started to oscillate and what was the maximum frequency when I tuned, <coughs> sorry, when I tuned the switch to 5. So different capacitors and 1 to 5 are uh, 120 picofarad, 1120 picofarad, 5700 picofarad, uh, uh, 47000 picofarad and 82000 picofarad. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I hope this is not boring and too long, but uh, I think this explanation is necessary. So this is the table, the switch positions now in the top of the video. And let's do some tests. Here at the moment I have connected this coil to the oscillator. So let's see how this coil acts at the different um, positions from the switch. That was my first test. One, no oscillation. 
2, slight oscillation on 102 kilohertz. 3, big oscillation on 188. 4, very big oscillation on 342 kilohertz. And 5, even stronger on 666 kilohertz. So this is the way to test your coils. See on which frequency the coil operates uh, at its best. It performs best. So when I stick in the ferrite rod here, put on the camera for a while. Also my battery goes down at the moment, but okay. Stick in the, in the ferrite rod. Now of course the frequency goes down due to the high inductance from that ferrite rod back to 1. This is the frequency. It oscillates on 32 kilohertz. 2. Position 2. It oscillates on 41 kilohertz. Position 3. It oscillates very strong and it has a very good sine wave on 109 kilohertz. 4. It stops. Nothing. 5. Nothing. So we know from this coil that the frequency band where it's useful goes from um, 32 kilohertz with a ferrite rod inside up to 109 kilohertz approximately. And so you can test all your coils, make a table and also study whether the waveform is pure, that's important, and of course on which frequency it works, also very important. And with this um, measuring method you can get a good insight how all these coils act, perform on different frequencies. And on the frequency where it performs best, so the biggest oscillation with the highest uh, amplitude and the purest waveform, that's the ideal um, frequency where to use that coil. Of course, uh, you can use coils in a certain frequency band. Let's show that. This coil is now in a low frequency band, its ferrite is inside. When you take it out, the ferrite rod, you will see that the frequency goes higher and higher. And here the ferrite rod is completely taken out. When we study the, the counter at the same moment, I put in the, the, the ferrite rod now. And you can see the frequency go down. That's normal. My camera runs out a little bit. I hope I can do one other um, coil. So let's look for instance to this coil. Put down the camera. I hope my camera will not stop during this video. I connect the coil. So let's look where this coil acts. It's now connected. There's no oscillation visible. And now I go to position 4 from the switch and 5 from the switch. First we look at the counter. 3.4 megahertz. And we going to study the waveform. You can do that by changing the scope uh, settings. And you can see that it has a quite pure sine wave. Not very perfect, but perhaps useful. When you uh, want to 
make an ideal waveform, you have to adapt that coil. Make it in another way on this frequency, 3.4. Uh, another demo, final demo. Typical choke coil, old choke coil here in wax. Uh, let's see where it oscillates. Five, no oscillation. Here there is an oscillation. You can see it very clearly on the scope. This is a clear, very precise, good sine wave. So this old choke coil. Uh, Covered in wax has oscillates on a frequency from 2 to 5 kilohertz and has a very good sine wave. So by this way you can, can get insight in coils. Test them, see how they are made, uh, watch the diameter, study the diameter, make notes, make a table. Uh, right, whether they have a ferrite core or not, etc. etc. Uh, by this way, you can get good insight in radio coils.